The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. we got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. we got markets in positive territory to kick things off. we got some retail earnings going on this morning. Dix trading lower by about 20%, man. You talk about a haircut overnight, uh, and why not? Let's jump to it, because that's the one that's got me. They revised the outlook, and boy, that is a drop-off for you, folks. What are you talking about? More than 20% now. You were pushing 150 yesterday. You're pushing 116 right now you jump over to the thinkorswim platform much larger than the expected move which was only a seven dollar move priced into this equity so what's seven bucks just shy of five percent and what are you going to do you're going to open down 20 plus percent on this equity we take a look at dicks on a little bit of a longer term basis and you are going to open at where we were in almost basically two years ago pretty Remarkable, right? Two years ago, even more than that, June of 2021, we're talking about. We were up at about 102. We're pushing 116, so not quite at that level, I guess. You got to go back basically two years ago, though. August of 2021. 2021 is 2023 right now. Uh, absolutely remarkable. We'll see where that goes. Back to the markets this morning. Markets, though, in positive territory. That's not all that's going on. As we got markets higher, you see the overnight action up to 4440. We're backing off a bit from those highs, but still up by 18. That's about four tenths percent in the positive in the S&Ps. NASDAQ 100, we're back above 15,000, 15,090. Positive by 105, that's seven tenths percent in the positive. We got NVIDIA earnings coming up this week as well. We got Dow up 36 points right now. That's a tenth of a percent in the positive in the Russell. Up by about six, you see the Russell and a little bit of a give back. Uh, S&P talking about the banks again this morning. We'll get into that, but you got some of those banks trading lower potentially weighing a bit on the Russell when you compare it especially to something like the NASDAQ 100. We jump to Bitcoin, you're sitting at about 26,000. We jump over to the crude contract, back under 80 bucks, barely, 79.88. We're off about two bucks from where we were almost 24 hours ago though on that crude contract gold. You see the volatility in gold this morning, up to 1932. We're still positive by $2 on the session, but remember, positive on the session really just brings us back to about 1.30 yesterday afternoon when the gold contract session closes. We're right back to where this thing was chopping around at about 1.30 at 19.25. We jumped to notes and bonds. They've been the story recently. And boy, how about it? How about a 108 handle last night, right? 108, man. Pretty remarkable. You got down to a 108 handle in the middle of the day, chopping around at that level. And boom, just like that, we're coming after lower price yet again. And higher yield, we're talking about a yield in the 10-year, approaching 4.35. Approaching 4.35, the yield on the 10-year. This all ahead of Jackson Hole coming up on Friday. I'm sure Chairman Powell is watching yields uh, with a special eye as he will be speaking Friday when I end my program about 10 a.m. Eastern time, the chairman speaks. That's your 10-year right now, basically flat, but you see a little bit of a pullback in the last hour or so. You jump over to the 30-year, flat as well. We made it to a 117.18 price point on the 30-year last night. And jumping over to just look at that yield curve for a moment. We talked about the 10-year sitting at approaching, what, 4.34 right now. We're approaching 4.35. 30-year sitting at 4.44. You jump to the 2-year, above 5%. Look at that action. Right? You get the two, you're up two basis points with a five handle. Absolutely remarkable. It's happening with yields. Uh, and we'll see where Chairman Powell goes on Friday. All right, let's jump to Dix, man. You talk about a haircut, like I mentioned, 20% as the retailer slashes outlook. It says over theft concerns. They are in there, but that's the, a company of this size. Uh, leave it up to CNBC, man. And I'm just cherry picking a headline. I was reading a couple stories on this this morning. But just going over some of the numbers. Uh, this stock is not down 20% over just theft concerns, folks, okay? Uh, almost irresponsible reporting. Shocking, I know, from the people over at CNBC. 
a lot more going on than just that. But yeah, they got some theft going on for sure. And that includes everything. As in, they were talking about that employee includes employees as well. I was reading about this in terms of where that theft is coming from. A drop in profit. And they cut their earnings outlook for the year after seeing an uptick in retail theft and slow sales in the outdoor category. Well, slow sales is going to be a big one for sure. Yeah, it's the first reference that they've made to shrink, which is where you have some type of theft or missing or something like that of your inventory. Fell short of the estimates getting into those numbers. It's a big miss, man. They missed by about a full dollar. You're supposed to make 381 make 282 they slightly miss on revenue but boy a big miss on earnings there I'm trying to get the line exactly where they talked about uh sales rising on the year net income 244 million they made 318 a year earlier they now expect earnings of 11 and i want to go over because it's it's a it's a decent miss but is it a 20 percent haircut miss boy so there's a lot of Equity is priced for perfection right now. If you get these types of revisions and the market says, hold on a second, we're going to shave like 20 and 25% off your market cap overnight. They expect earnings of 11, 33 to 12, 13. Previous guidance was 1290 to 1380. So yeah, that's what, 10, 15% cut in their earnings. You're getting a 20% cut in the market cap. It reaffirmed its comp store sales of flat to up 2%. That was a slight miss as well, I believe. And they reference to shrink, and that's the first time they've made a reference to that, which is talking about maybe theft or whatever it be. Margins fell to 34% compared to 36. Same store sales were up 1.8% in the quarter compared to down 5.1% in the year ago period, driven by a 2.8% uptick in transactions Market was looking for about 2.7%. Yeah, they cut less than 1% of their global workforce. They're going to cost them a little bit of money. Nonetheless, the real numbers there are that they're talking about they're going to make mess, less money than they thought. Earnings of 1133 to 1213, they were looking for about 13 to 1380, right? And the market says, hold on a second. That's a problem. And we're trading down to 116, which is pretty remarkable. We jump around to some of the other companies. Macy's out with their numbers. We'll get into these as well, but Macy's trading lower, down to about 1370. You spike to 16 bucks. Uh, Macy's off about a dollar. You back this thing up for a five year. Quite a different chart when compared to Dick's, right? You're going to open at 1367. So, some, somewhat on the lower boundary there. Compare that to what I just went over for Dick's, right? Where you put, were pushing basically all time highs for that equity. So, a lot of optimism built in there. Just jumping around some of the others. TJ Maxx chopping around about 89.20. Let's jump around some of the FAG stocks as we come into the first break. You got Amazon shares. They're going to be up a bit with the market right now, up almost a dollar to 135.38. Microsoft, I got a story pulled up for them. They're revising their offer in the UK, sweetening the deal a little bit to make sure that the regulators are on board uh, for Activision. That equity is going to pop about $4. Pretty remarkable. You're talking about on the open, that is. We're up what? 14 bucks from the lows of friday morning on microsoft shares remarkable you jump over to the big dog apple apple shares getting a lift today by about a dollar remember folks they got 16 billion shares outstanding that's a 16 billion dollar lift for apple shares excuse me and we jump over to nvidia it just doesn't stop man get on that train i get nvidia with their earnings this week pushing higher yet again by about 12 dollars in the pre-market stay tuned folks lots to talk about we'll be right back after the break If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN Education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P futures up by 18 right now. We get the NASDAQ 100 by 103. And we got our man Kevin Hinks on the line every trading day, folks. Fast market. And we got a new network. We got the Schwab network coming at you every day, 12 noon Eastern time. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, the team. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Great to be back on with you. Yep, a crazy couple days here with the launch of a new network, the Schwab network. Uh, so, yeah, we're all very excited about it. A lot of changes, a lot of them subtle. You'll notice some color changes from green to blue. But that being said, uh, the content is still the same. The financial coverage is still the same. So I'll go here, Tommy. I like it, man. I was tuning in. I'm a little biased. I like the blue. I always like the green. I like the blue. TFNN's got some blue. I like that Schwab blue, man. Um, so I like it. It looks good on that set. Uh, back to the market, Kevin. We got Jackson Hole on Friday. Yields, yet again the story. What do you think about the 10-year? Let's start there, man, pushing 4.35% this morning ahead of uh, Chairman Powell on Friday. What do you make of this market? Yeah, Tommy, this is something that amazingly yesterday, the market was able to shrug off higher yields, and they're not down today. They're not up significantly, but they're not down either today, Tommy. And think about this, Tommy. When you break it down, the economic data, you know, what's one of the headlines out this morning? American Airlines pilots the next four years are going to get a 46% raise, 21% immediately. All that considered, if you think of UPS, the airlines, auto workers, actors and writers, there's so many groups of workers fighting for higher wages that when they get them and they get big raises like you just saw from remember you airlines pilots now american airlines pilots that all goes to wages it all makes wages more sticky and pushes up the overall levels of inflation tommy and you know i'm not surprised based on the data based on everything we're seeing uh that that the tenure is 
drifting back up to new multi-year highs. Now, the question is, what does Jerome Powell do about that? When he speaks Friday morning at 10.05 Eastern, what does he say about lingering levels or stickiness in inflation? So, listen, I think the next couple days with NVIDIA coming out on Wednesday, Jerome Powell speaking on Friday, this is going to get real interesting, Tommy. Yeah, a great summation, man. You beat me to kind of the next follow-up. I was going to ask you what you thought about the run on NVIDIA. We got NVIDIA earnings there are tomorrow. We all know, boy, it's been um, quite the Cinderella story to higher prices. In the last couple days, even, Kevin, from Friday's low, you're talking about up almost 15% almost, up from 420 to 480. Uh, what are you thinking for NVIDIA? All expectations pretty high, and we see how some of the equities dicks this morning, right? Boy, you come in with some yeah, lofty expectations. Look, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, Tommy. If, if you look from about eight fifty nine 9 o'clock on Friday morning, NVIDIA's up about $60 since then, and up a, a, a little bit more so far this morning. So this is a stock, and Tommy, think about this. It's more than just NVIDIA. You can start to make a sector of AI stocks and stocks that have rallied based on AI. And look at the links, and what could move? Off NVIDIA's earnings, Apple, Google Alphabet, Microsoft, Amazon, Meta, Qualcomm, IBM, Intel, I mean, and startup companies, massive, right? I mean, are connecting. So, just like last time, when NVIDIA did the entire month. Oh, you broke up there a little bit. Do I got you, Kevin? Yep, I'm here. Maybe I got Hello. him. Kevin, you there, pal? Yeah, I'm here. All right, maybe we'll get him back on the line, folks. Uh, NVIDIA, there's a chart. Guess what? We're pushing all time highs above the price of 480. Al, just let me know if you're going to back on the line there. Uh, he's still on the line. Kevin, can you hear me? Is it my line? Maybe you there, pal? All right, I'm having trouble grabbing them there. But, yeah, you see the chart on the Thinkorswim platform. I got them, maybe? All right, I'm sure he'll talk up if he gets in there. Um, 482 we are trading right now, folks. Kevin referenced the last earnings, spiking from 300 up to 400. Pretty remarkable, right? You make that spike up to 400 from 300, and guess what? Where are we coming into the next earnings season? At 480. Imagine that, right? If I told you, hey, we're at 300 to 400, by the time we get to their next earnings event, which is coming down the line in August, we're going to be at almost 500, and we might be at 500 by the end of the day, man. We might be at 500 by the end of the day. Uh, check out Fast Market, folks. And, yeah, Schwab Network began this week. Similar lineup, similar action, similar hosts out there, and I do like that new blue. Uh, TFNN's got some blue out there, so they got the Schwab blue, and it's the Schwab Network. Our man Kevin Hanks. Every day, 12 noon Eastern time, folks, check it out. If you haven't checked it out, I've learned so much over the years myself. From the way they break down the option trades, they show you hypothetical trade setups every single day. They're usually walking you through three different trade setups every single day. I encourage you to check it out. Check out our man Kevin at 12 noon Eastern time. We'll talk to him tomorrow. And yeah, Schwab Network in action this week. Uh, I know that's been a long time coming. And boy, it takes a lot to change over something like that as Schwab um, pretty much you know, integrates their acquisition of TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim. Uh, and thankfully, they're going to be thinking, keeping around that Thinkorswim platform, which I love, man, as an active trader, as an options trader. So much information on that platform. Pretty cool. Uh, so check out Fast Market, pro folks, because, yeah, we got some retail earnings, man. You see Dick Sporting Goods, as, as I mentioned. You jump over to NVIDIA, and this is the type of information I'm talking about, man. Kevin walk, has walked us through us many times. The market maker expected move for NVIDIA, folks. Their earnings are coming out tomorrow, August 23rd. You're talking about an expected move of $44. Well, guess what? That shouldn't surprise you. But here's the thing. If you're bullish, keep in mind, please, that you got a $44 move priced to the upside. But meanwhile, as Kevin said, you're up 16%, $60, excuse me, he said. But I think it's pushing that level. What is it? Let's do it right now. Where are we at? Where are we at as we come into this? We're talking about 482 Minus the price point of about 416. That's a $66 run on a $416 equity. We're talking about a 16% pop, man, from where you were on Friday's low to where we are coming in. Uh, so pretty remarkable when you look at only a $44 move on their earnings. Yeah, you better believe that it might have that type of action, man, when you think about the move this has had just since Friday. Now, 
we got a couple upgrades there, right? We had Palo Alto Networks. We had some big earnings. Nonetheless, uh, yeah, lofty prices, all-time highs, all-time highs. Now, some of the analyst numbers they were talking about yesterday, what were they? Help me out in the den. Was it $780 one of the price targets was from one of the Wall Street banks out there? I think 680 was somewhere out there. Massive, massive numbers in terms of where they're looking for NVIDIA. So Wall Street will tell you it might have room to run. But boy, folks, remember that this stock was trading at 300 90 days ago and you're pushing 500, let alone you were trading in the beginning of the year at 141. Now, the world has changed, man. That was a revolutionary earnings period. I've never seen anything like the numbers that they beat with in their last earnings event, man. Uh, so we'll see where we go. We get their numbers tomorrow. But today we're digesting some of the retail numbers. Dick's out with their numbers, as I mentioned. Let's check back, see how they're doing. We're pushing pre-market session lows as we come into the opening bell for Dix. We jump over to Macy's on their numbers as well, down about more than a dollar at 1360 for Macy's shares. We have the Dow rolling over negative. We'll talk about some of the banks when we come back as the S&P voicing their concerns um, over some of those banks. Shouldn't be too surprising, man. The stress is on. Yields are going up and banks have to pay for capital, folks. That's the way it's going to work, at least for the foreseeable future. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back for the open. Don't go away. Attention traders and investors. Are you ready to elevate your game in the stock market? On August 23rd, join Basil Chapman, the mastermind behind the renowned Chapman Wave methodology in a subscriber-exclusive 90-minute webinar. From 4 to 5.30 p.m. Eastern, dive deep into the secrets of the 914 moving average, decode market turns, and get a head start on the stock outlook for September and October. The golden opportunity is free for all opening call subscribers. And if you're not on board yet as a subscriber, here's the deal. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee. Zero risks, all rewards. So what are you waiting for? Visit the front page of TFNN.com now and secure your spot. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You're looking at an S and P up by about 17 points off of the highs of the session. Talking about highs at about 44.40, with 10 points off that price levels, but still positive by about four tenths percent in the S and P's. Nasdaq 100, we're up by six tenths percent. Dow positive by 12. You get the Russell positive by eight. Uh, story I was referencing there about the banks. S and P downgrades multiple U.S. banks, citing tough operating conditions. Pretty similar to what we got from Moody's warning that funding risks and weaker profitability will likely test the sector's credit strength. Some of the names that they downgraded, Associates Bank Corp, what's that, ASB, ASB, Valley National, Valley, let's check them out, ASB, down about four tenths percent, Valley was in there, down one tenth percent, I think Key Corp, down one percent is in there as well, what else do they have in there? Uh, Comerica, CMA, CMA, <coughs> Down a little bit with the positive market today. Comerica down about half a percent. Now, we talked about some of the other companies with their numbers. Going over some of those, Macy's, they're lower. Jumping over to Macy's numbers. Markdowns to clear inventory cut into sales. Macy's, uh, pretty remarkable how these companies compete as big box retailers. We're seeing Dick's, man. Dick's is expensive. I like going into Dick's. They got a good Dick's Sporting Goods at the Brandon Mall out by here, which is a great mall. They got a carousel in that mall. I've talked about it before. And we go through Dick's. It's expensive, though, man. I'm talking about $40 for a pair of shorts. $40 for a pair of shorts, Nike shorts. You can find those similar shorts for 15 to 20 bucks at Bell's or Marshall's or something like that. Nonetheless, uh, Macy's comp sales beat analyst expectations, though we're down significantly from a year ago. Promotions were surgically implemented to clear seasonal items. We continue to see uncertainty in the macroeconomic environment. Uncertainty. Same store sales in the second quarter down 9.2%. Higher end Bloomingdale's fell 2.7%. Yeah, they beat slightly, but the market's worried here, man. When you tie into the Dick Sporting Goods into this, you tie into the Macy's, we jump back to these equities, you got Macy's shares, yeah, you're down by 8% right now. You jump over to Dick Sporting Goods, down 21%. Amazon's up by 4 tenths percent. TJ Maxx right now, down slightly, down about 8 tenths percent as the Dow rolls over a negative. All right, we jump over to Zoom shares. How about Zoom? Hopefully you didn't get caught in the frenetic run last night to 74.50 on theirs numbers. You give all that up and then some, Zoom, down 2 0.5% on their numbers right there. Uh, not what you want to see, right? Uh, boost outlook with move beyond video calls. Quarterly revenue from the largest customers gains 18%. They break these down in a little bit of an obscure way, the way they break down some of their revenue numbers here in terms of large customers, percentages on large customers, etc. Revenue for the year ending in January will be as much as $4.5 billion in May. Zoom projected about 4.48, so pretty much in line. Earnings, slightly a beat there. Um, yeah, and this is a profitable company, man, but it is not the growth company it was once thought to be. Fiscal second quarter enterprise revenue increased 10%. They're trying to spin things here, but it's a tough one. So what do they got? 218,000 enterprise customers in the period, an increase of 6.9% from a year earlier. Of those customers, 3,672 contributed more than 100 grand in trailing revenue. So you got a few thousand customers that are paying six figures. That's a decent bill, man. They must be using a lot of Zoom for 3,600 companies paying what? What is that? That's eight grand a month for Zoom? That must be quite the company, right? And I get it, man, in terms of how it works. We've used it. I've used it. Uh, but nonetheless, the market's still skittish, and that shows it, man. You can't hold anything. You're up to 74 bucks. You give it up quickly. The conference call began at about 70 bucks. We opened at 68, and we traded lower. We keep our eye on Dix. It's dropping even more. Yeah, look at this. Dix down 23.3%. This market's worried, man. I mean, we've been talking about the student loan payments. These CEOs got to know that's coming. That's going to play into discretionary income in a pretty dramatic fashion, folks. Those interest payments are starting October 1st. There's nothing like a deadline to make you pay attention. September begins in less than two weeks, and that's probably the first time that people are really going to be able to plan for it because, you know, no matter how much you plan for it, if you don't have the disposable income to put that money away, 
then you say that you'll do it at a later time. It's human, it's, it's, it's human reasonable behavior, right? So what's going to happen is you're going to come into that crunch time in October where the payment is finally due and you're going to have to make those choices. And those choices are probably not spending as much in other areas. And those other areas are probably discretionary places uh, like retail to a certain degree, depending on where you are on the income scale, at least. Okay, we jump over to Microsoft shares. Pull this up. As I mentioned, uh, concedes Activision cloud streaming rights to Ubisoft. So they got a couple of um, concessions is what they got going in this headline. Pushes to get Activision deal done with fresh UK offer. And they commit to divesting certain of those rights to Ubisoft. So that kind of surmises it a little bit better. The UK starts new deal probe saying it is not a green light. Nonetheless, you look at the two equities today. You jump over to Microsoft shares. You're up by about a full percent almost to 324.75. You jump over to Activision Blizzard, and they like it, man. You're up to 92.12. You're back to 91.78. You're up by 1.1% for Activision Blizzard shares this morning. All right, let's jump over to NVIDIA. We talked about NVIDIA. They get their numbers tomorrow. Boy, this thing has been quite the darling. We're up again today in pretty dramatic fashion. Let's actually check in. How much are we up today? Uh, that's Tesla up 3%. NVIDIA shares. Oh, they give it up on the open. Look at that. I mean, 10 bucks in this equity is nothing. You're up by nine tenths percent. I mean, I guess if you were making the trade this week for NVIDIA earnings and you made it yesterday and you opened today up $30 to $40 where you were yesterday, maybe you're taking your money and you're not waiting for the earnings. As I mentioned, right, there's about a $49 move priced into earnings. Well, depending on where you get into this equity Friday or Monday, you got 49 bucks to the upside already. So pay attention to that one, man, as you give it up on the open. Can't blame people selling when you get a $30 pop from where you were at noon yesterday from where you were to the open today. That's an all-time high print for NVIDIA coming into their numbers. Could it be an ominous all-time high print? We will see. But nonetheless, I mean, you got to love it, man. Is NVIDIA the new Tesla? Option traders place their bet. Remember how far their bets. Remember how far Tesla ran past where anybody said was possible? Keep that in mind as well. Investors are wagering that the furious rally in NVIDIA shares will continue after Wednesday's earning report. How about $100 billion in NVIDIA options this year? Now, I've go, gone over this before, that when you talk about $100 billion in NVIDIA options, the amount of money people are putting up is far less than that because the multiples that you can gain and the exposure you can gain using options to vast sums of money that dwarf the equity that you are putting up. Uh, about 60% of that sum is tied to call options that can be used uh, to bet on a continued rally. No other stock besides Tesla has garnered that level of investor interest. Shouldn't be surprising there. And there's your calls and your puts. They're both rising, right? So the bets are on, man. Some of the most actively traded contracts on Monday were those that would profit if the shares kept climbing, touching 500 bucks. Well, we made it to 483 this morning, man. Yeah, and as they mentioned, we're looking at about an 11% move, about a $45 move priced into that equity, and we find out tomorrow the video shares, though. They're selling on the open. NASDAQ only down by 50, a little bit of a sell on the opening bell. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market. 
the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps barely up by eight right now. We just gave up 20 points from where we were trading at about an hour ago at about 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. As I mentioned, up to 44.40. We're down to 44.20. Just like that, you got the Dow rolling over to negative prices. Negative by one. NASDAQ gives it up a bit. We're at 15,029 right now. And we jump to some of the other equities with action this morning. We got Lowe's with their numbers up by 3.7% for Lowe's. Jump over to that, and you got low sticks by their full-year earnings forecast despite weakening sales as spring projects offer a boost. Yeah, so they stick with it, man. Comp sales will drop by two to four percent. Adjusted earnings per share, thirteen twenty to thirteen sixty. Sales of almost ninety billion dollars. They come in with earnings that are a slight beat, four fifty-six versus four forty-nine, and revenue is a slight miss, twenty-four point nine six versus twenty-four point nine nine is the number. Yeah, comp sales only down 1.6%. The market was looking for a decline at 2.6%. Not bad. Spring projects, online growth, and momentum with home professionals lifted sales as lumber prices fell and demand for discretionary do-it-yourself projects dropped. And they are more reliant on the do-it-yourself shoppers than Home Depot, which has more of the professional out there. Only about a quarter of low sales come from home professionals, while Home Depot typically, get, typically, typically gets about half of its sales yeah but nonetheless man lows they're getting it done they're a little bit higher and we jump over to they're up 3.8 percent you jump over to home depot shares no real lift there from home depot they were out with their numbers last week catching a little bit of a bid but check it out as home depot they've given up kind of that pop they got on their numbers back it up to lows let's take a little longer term look here yeah so lows 226, we're as high as 263. You back it up a year and a half ago, you jump over to Home Depot. Pretty similar chart, as in you make that spike at the beginning of the 2022 year at 420, and we're sitting at 324 right now for Home Depot shares. All right, what else we got? Well, looks like Hillary is not in the press anymore, and so we got Harold is out there. Storm Harold is bound for Texas, 45 mile per hour winds, weather watch, storms in the Atlantic, heat in the central U.S., and wildfires in Greece. That's what they got going at Bloomberg today, but nonetheless, they got another storm out there for Texas. Talked about it yesterday, folks. If you're thinking about getting prepared, uh, now would be the time to do it for hurricane season. We got a lot of listeners in Florida. Just make sure you get a plan. Go stock up and get some water so you don't have to stress out when the inevitable storm uh, makes its way. We got some warm waters out there, folks. Um, so make sure you're prepared. And we got another one, Tropical Storm Herald. It's going to dive into the Texas coast in a few hours. 
and this is the very beginning. 45 mile an hour winds, right? We just had one hit in California. But we're coming into September and we are coming into some lofty numbers when you talk about the water temps out there and that is what matters most to those hurricanes. All right, what else we got pulled up here? Yeah, we got Chinese stocks trading higher. And they're not exactly sure why, is the headline. Sun rally in China stocks has traders scratching their heads. Maybe it's technical, they're not sure. But nonetheless, I think the Hang Seng was up like 2%, something like that. What is it? Let me see. Yeah, I got it up a full percent. Maybe it was up 2% at one point. Shanghai's up almost 9 tenths. Nikkei up about 9 tenths percent. Uh, yeah, but Hang Seng climbed nearly 2% within minutes after a seven-day losing run. So maybe just a little bit of technical, maybe a little bit of oversold, overbought. Nonetheless, they're getting a pop today over in China. Yeah, I was trying to take a look at those. I got to get up on my hurricane tracking skills, man. I was pulling up Noah. Check out this chart, right? They got the hurricanes going on already out here, man. Which one's this out here? All right, we'll have to pull it up. That's a pretty cool map, though, tracking all those. Look at that. Look at that weather. Got to love it, man. Talked about those in Zoom. Talked about NVIDIA and Tesla. We talked about Microsoft as well. And what else we got? We talked about Dix as well. On the yield curve, we checked back the 10-year. Look at this, man. Yeah, let's look at yields. Keep your eye on yields, man. Chairman Powell, he's sipping his coffee this morning going, come on, man. You're going to do me like this before Jackson Hole on Friday? Look at this drop we just got, man. We just tested the lows we got last night at about 8 o'clock. We're talking about a 10-year yield right now of 4.36, 108.28 right now. So as you've seen yields rise, what are you seeing? You see the market pull back. We're probably seeing some dollar strength here as well, right? There's your dollar strength, man. 103.60 right now for the dollar. We're pushing the highs we had on Friday. You take a little bit, look at a longer term chart. And we're talking about 103.60 right now in the dollar index. There's your five year weekly up to 115, 103.60. You put that back on a daily just for the year. Yeah, quite a different story when you look at the dollar compared to that yield, man. So the the price, 108, we're basically right back at all-time highs. Not all-time, recent highs, I should say, on the 10-year yield at 4.36%. That's a number, man. Looking at the yield curve, the two-year right now, 5.03. 5.03, the yield on the two-year. All right, let's jump around and see what else we got going on. In some of those FANG stocks, as we get the market rolling over a bit with higher yields coming at you, Amazon barely holding on to gains up two tenths. We jump over to NVIDIA shares. They sell off a bit on the open. They give back all those gains. We get an all-time high print on the open for NVIDIA the day before their earnings, still up by six tenths percent right now. Yeah, Palo Alto Networks, they get the pop yesterday on their numbers on Friday after the bell. Today we digest those numbers basically flat. You're down a buck eighty-four, but boy, yesterday we jumped what forty dollars at Palo Alto. We jumped to some of the other banks we had out there getting a downgrade. Key Bank, yeah, they're off about one percent, right there, one point three. We jumped to some of the bigger banks right now with rising yields. J.P. Morgan down about three tenths percent. Let's just see. Look at this, right? So you go from one hundred one up to about one forty-five, one forty-four. So what is that? An A to B leg of about forty-four bucks, forty-three dollars. You pull back to 20, 125, 160. Yeah, you only got about 35. Didn't quite complete that same A to B, C to D, but is interesting. You got that pullback right to the 382. You chopped around from March 10th to April 13th, about a month, a month, and then boom, you accelerate higher to the tune of, yeah, about a 35 point run to 160 JP Morgan. Jump over to Wells Fargo, down about four tenths percent right now. Bank of America shares down about half a percent right now. Citi basically flat. Kevin mentioned some of the airline pilots getting a raise up above, excuse me, American down about nine tenths. Yeah, 46% over the next four years or something like that, I believe it is. They deserve it, man. Okay, this is lag catching up. We have inflation that's been running at 10% for two to three years. That's a 20 to 30% rise in the cost of living, folks. Okay, so when you go 46% over the next four years, that's factoring in the inflation you're going to get over that period of time. You're talking about basically a standard of living adjustment over a period of seven years, right? Boy, you deal with inflation, folks, over seven years. Real quick, seven years, you take a dollar, okay, and you just go up by 6%. Watch this. 
So you're at 1.06 the first year. You're at 112 the second year. You're at 120 the third. You're at 126 the fourth. You're at 134 the fifth. You're at 141 the sixth. And you're at 150. 6% inflation over seven years, and you need a 50% raise. How about that, right? I didn't even plan that. I'm just cherry picking numbers that are pretty much where we are. You take a 6% inflation number, you put it over seven years, and hopefully we're not dealing with 6% in seven years. Before, we were dealing with 10 to 12 at one point. 50% is what you need for the same amount of cash. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. Don't go away. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den and Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. NN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the 10-year right now off six ticks, 108.285. We're two ticks away from breaking that low that we got last October. We're talking about a yield right now pushing 4.36%, uh, a yield on the 10-year man. We got NVIDIA earnings coming up tomorrow. You jump over to NVIDIA shares right now. You give it all up. We were at 480. We were higher than 41, too. We were at 43, and we just dropped $17 on this equity from the open, man. Be careful on NVIDIA. Pretty interesting coming into their numbers. A lot of optimism. As we mentioned, that's an all-time high print at 483. So tomorrow's going to be an interesting one with NVIDIA earnings. But guess what? We got more reasons for that. 
We got our man Basil Chapman, folks. He's coming up with a live 90-minute webinar tomorrow. This webinar Basil's doing, folks, the power of the 914 moving average and other indicators in the Chapman Wave methodology. It is free for opening call subscribers, okay? So all you got to do is go over there, sign up for the opening call if you've never tried it out. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. I encourage you, please check it out. Even if you don't think you're going to cancel it, give it a try. You'd be surprised how much great information Basil puts out, puts out every day. He puts out videos for his subscribers over the weekend. There's about 10 to 12 archived webinars you get when you sign up for the opening call instantly. This webinar will be archived if you can't attend for the full 90 minutes on Wednesday afternoon. Uh, but Basil's be talking about a few different things he's, that he uses. He had some great calls recently, folks, talking about pegging the Dow at the highs. He's going to go over how he did that, how he used the methodology in the Chapman Wave and other indicators on balance volume, the 200 EMA, exponential moving average. Check that out Wednesday. It's going to be awesome. We're going to get NVIDIA earnings, man, all ahead of Jackson Hole on Friday. Uh, yeah, so we got some volatility. Markets rolling over right now as we're coming into our man Basil Chapman coming up next with the Tiger Technicians Hour. We got our man Steve Rhodes at 11 o'clock, Fast Market from the Schwab Network coming up at noon Eastern time. Uh, my dad, live from 3 till 4. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you starting your trading day off here, folks. Dow negative, Russell negative, S&Ps clinging on to gains by a few points right now. Don't forget about Basil's webinar. Check out the opening call, folks. You can't go wrong. You get the webinar tomorrow, 90 minutes. You get the Basil's outstanding newsletter. And he's coming up next. Stay tuned. Have a great one, folks.